Okay. Cool. So, um, excuse me. So for this class, we focused a little bit more on breaks. I talked about how when we get to the break, you want to like I use this as an example, although it doesn't have to be this, but you want to choose the pose you're in. You don't want to look like you just randomly got stopped mid-motion. You want to look like you deliberately chose the way you're standing. This is a position you wouldn't mind having a picture taken in. You want a little bit of speed right as you get there and then crispness when you land. So we talked about picking up the leg just a little bit, adding that little extra with the rib cage or the head so there's that speed, then that tension. I'll hold that for a beat or two depending on the feel and the tempo of the song then we'll relax and ease out of that. Uh, the way I get into that, very similar to what we talked about in the last class when we were talking about phrase changes. Uh, I want to put some like speed and a little bit of a fancier, more dynamic pattern, some turns before that, right? I don't want to go five, six, seven, eight, ha, and nail the break there. We want something a little bit more exciting before that. Um, so uh, the variation that we use started from the handshake handhold, prepping her for that reverse whip. One, two, ask for the hand, pull her past. Three, add four, open her up and turn her slow. Five, six, quick turn, seven and eight. Seven and eight, hip one for that break. And then ease out of this, right? I could slowly start to bring her out into a turn. Lots of times, I'll end up taking this slowly up and over her head and work our way out of it from there. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, quick, eight, hit the break, work our way out of it gradually into the next thing. Then we play with the idea of, well, what happens if when we go to do that, and this could apply for the break or the phrase changes, you set up this move, you think it's gonna work, and you realize it's not quite the right amount of time. You wanna be able to adjust. Usually when I time these things, it's not perfect. I'm like, I think this move will work out, and then as I get closer, I'm like, oh, I need two more beats or two less beats. So for example, if I realize that I started this early, I started this on seven, I could add some more turns. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, yet yeah, seven, eight, one, to get there and eat up that extra time, for example. Um, or maybe I land here on seven, and I might be like, oh shoot, seven, eight, bring her back, and hit the break there instead of one. So I'm extending that pattern, making it longer. Um, what we played with was when you don't have enough time. So we started this on three, we took out one of the turns. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hit one, right there instead, right? So two beats less, I just shaved off the turn, problem solved. All right, we then talked about what if it's even later than that, and you're like, five, six, seven, oh crap, it's already about to happen, right? So we're gonna lead something that's really quick, accelerated, and abrupt. Normally it would be really difficult to lead and follow, but she knows what we're trying to hit here. She can hear it coming in the music, so when I do that, that's not a surprise, and it's not super difficult for her to follow. If I led that with no musical context, it would be really challenging. So that one was five, six, seven, eight, quick, one, to hit that. And then this one, usually I slide out one direction or the other to get out of that, for example. Um, the song we used for that one, we did that to uh, All Around the World by Lou Rawls, and I just set up kind of different like sequences beforehand. So for example, uh, if you did two whips, and on the second whip, we did the behind the back hand change, right? So one basic whip, whip here, right? That sets you up on the third eight for this to hit the break, right? Oh wait, sorry, one more turn, my bad, right? Uh, we then did three underarms on the third underarm, change the hands here. That sets you up for the one where you're starting it on three. Uh, we then did a whip and two underarms, changing the hands on the second underarm. That sets you up where you're starting it on five. Obviously, like you don't want to be memorizing that sequence. You can use that to practice it to that song and see what I'm talking about. Uh, but the idea is that you're just dancing along. And as we talked about in the last class, you're not worrying about the like which A is this as you go. Just somewhere when you get to that last state, you want to train yourself to hear that this phrase change or this break is coming. And you realize that maybe you just happen to be here on three. And you're like, you go to start this pattern, and you're like, oh, I don't have as much time as I thought I did. You want to get comfortable being able to modify that. So we took you through this drill with this one pattern. Try that drill with another pattern and another pattern until you learn to modify several of them and followers, you learn how you can kind of articulate coming out of each of those for a break as well as that funky phrase change or like a dramatic slowdown in the music. Leaders, sorry, followers, if he sets you up and like maybe he gives you one too many turns and you're gonna be late, right? At the time that you would have stopped, go into slow motion, 
and then use the slow motion to get to where you were supposed to end up. So if I'm supposed to hit here, but one is here, I might be like, one, two, three, four, and work my way to there. Right? So you still kind of hit when you were supposed to hit, but then eventually you get to where you were supposed to be. Rather than just being like, well, I'm not there yet, and you don't hit it until one bit later, but now you've missed it in the music. Did I get everything? I see right? Hand behind yes. the back. Oh yeah, hand behind the back. Uh, so I'll show that from this side. To keep that handshake handhold when I change the hands, I hook the thumb and the middle finger around her wrist, her hand stays relaxed, let it unwind, and I can slide to the hand. Right? Wrist, unwind, slide to the hand. So that's that kind of that loose hook. Alright, thank you guys so much for spending the afternoon with me. I really appreciate it. I hope to see some of you again in the Smith Club workshop in about an hour. Give it up for Jonathan bringing me out. He does a great job. Well,